The 2018 MacBook Pro has a 6-core processor after 8 years of using a quad-core processor, but is it worth it to get rid of your 2012 to 2015 MacBook Pro for the new model? The Retina MacBook Pro was released in 2012 until around 2015 before the Touch Bar redesign was released in 2016. This design in my opinion was one of Apple's best and it still kept a good amount of I.O. while making the laptop very thin. However, Apple redesigned the laptop in 2016 with a thinner and lighter model featuring a new butterfly keyboard and a super large touchpad meant for multi-touch gestures. It also included a new touch bar which replaced the function keys. This new design unfortunately had plenty of issues such as the keyboards failing due to dust getting inside them and also the display cable was too short causing vertical lines on the display. The 2018 model was supposed to have fixed most of these issues, so let's take a look at both of these laptops. Right away, you can see the new space gray color, which is actually much nicer in my opinion. The 2018 MacBook Pro is not as long and is also not as deep as the 2013 Retina model. In terms of I.O., we have two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the 2018 and MagSafe 2, dual Thunderbolt 2 ports, a USB Type A, and a headphone on the Retina model. On the right side, the 2018 MacBook Pro has a headphone jack and two Thunderbolt 3 ports, while the other model has a Type A, HDMI out, and SD card reader. In terms of the touchpad, the Retina model has a nice, smooth touchpad with, with a really good size. Keyboard is excellent and it feels good to type, whereas the 2018 has a large touchpad, which is also smooth, but in my opinion, it's too big. The keyboard isn't very nice in my opinion, especially compared to the Retina and feels very flat. Both laptops have a Retina display as Apple calls it. The Retina MacBook Pro has a 2880 by 1800 IPS panel, while the 2018 also has a 2880 by 1800 IPS panel, but with true tone technology, which adjusts the display to your environment. The 2018 has nice colors with a nice 78% Adobe RGB color space, while the 2013 model has around 60% Adobe RGB color space. The 2018 is also brighter, around 500 nit brightness, while the 2013 is a little over 300. In terms of speaker quality, the 2013 has a nice balanced sound. For the 2018, it gets very loud, but the highs are a bit too, well, high. Now let's talk performance. We're gonna start with Final Cut. So Final Cut Pro X rendered at 4.48 minutes and 3.4 minutes on the 2013. Now, I'm not sure what happened here, but the Retina was faster and I ran this multiple times to make sure the 2018 didn't have a bad run. It seems that the 2018 was clocking in around 2 GHz, whereas the Retina model was clocking in around 2.80 GHz. I'm not sure why the 2018 was clocking so much lower because temperatures, while high, weren't making it throttle due to temperatures. It just wasn't utilizing everything for some reason. Speaking of temperatures, both laptops got very hot. They both averaged in the low 90s, 90C for the 2018, 91C for the 2013. The 2018 peaked at around 97C, while the 2013 Retina peaked at around 94C. These aren't the type of temperatures I'd want on my laptop if I was rendering videos all the time, which I'm not right now, but it's very concerning, definitely. Especially since my 2013 was repasted with Icy Diamond, before it was even worse than this. Next up is Logic Pro X. 
I bounce a 3 minute 12 track file into 320 kilobit per second AAC. The 2018 MacBook Pro won here by a decent amount thanks to those two extra cores. Now, keep in mind, this is a difference of seconds. So here it doesn't seem like as much of a difference, but let's say it took 10 minutes, then it would be like around eight minutes. So it's the longer that it takes, the, the better the 2018, of course. Now, temperature wise, the 2013 peaked at around 60 C, whereas the 2018 peaked around 81 C. And this is most likely due to the 2013 having two less core cores than the 2018. Taking a look at Cinebench 15, the 2018 MacBook Pro beat the 2018 Retina by a good amount here. And this was in both multi and single threaded performance. The 555X AMD GPU in the 2018 also beat the NVIDIA GeForce 750M in the Retina in the Cinebench OpenGL test by a good amount. This makes sense since the laptop has a much faster GPU than the other model and it's packing two more cores in the CPU, but the score on the 2018 is kind of low on the CPU. Next, let's take a look at Geekbench. Now here you can see that the 2018 wins by a very good amount. This is as expected from a laptop five years newer and having two extra cores. But if you look at single core, the 2013 actually does pretty well despite its age. In multi-threaded, it's pretty good difference. Looking at overall performance, the 2018 is about 24% faster than the Retina 2013. However, if we remove that weird Final Cut Pro X result that I was getting, then it's 35% faster than the 2013 Retina. Now, in my opinion, this is not too bad of an increase, but it's definitely not groundbreaking, especially since it's been five years since these laptops were released from each other. Now, as a bonus, I've included 3D Mark, and as you can see, the 2018 is much faster than the 2013. This is mainly thanks to both CPU and GPU advancements. This score takes into account the GPU and the CPU of each one. Keeping in mind, this was run in Windows, not Mac OS. So they ran at their highest performance and I didn't see too bad of a temperature. It was around in the 90s for both laptops. For me, it seems like MacBooks always run in the 90s. And as an extra bonus, I tested one game, Bioshock Infinite in Windows 10 at 1080p ultra settings. Now, as you can see, the 2018 is scoring much faster, more than two times faster than the 2013. And this is also because of the GPU. You can do very light gaming on both laptops with games like Counter-Strike, Dota, maybe even some Overwatch on really low settings, probably on the 2018. But if you do buy the MacBook 2018 and get with Vega 20, then you can actually probably do some decent lightweight gaming. With all that said, it's time for the conclusion. Is the 2018 MacBook Pro worth it over the other older model? Well, it depends. If you really need that extra performance, then I guess so. However, if you're happy with your current performance and love the IO of the older models, I'd say hold on to them. After trying out the 2018, I've decided to keep my 2013 only because in my case, it doesn't really feel any faster. Now keep in mind, I have an Alienware laptop for true performance, but comparing just these two, I'd say I'd wait longer until another model comes out that's refreshed. The IO and keyboard are enough for me to stick with the older model. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.